Greetings and God's peace be with you. My name is Christopher Lynn Payne and I'm one of the co-rectors at St. Francis Episcopal Parish and Community Center. I am so excited to get a chance to talk with you today. Some of you may remember that September was the beginning of my work in a part-time capacity with the Diocese of Maryland. As I step into a new role uh, on our bishop's uh, team as the Canon for Congregational Vitality. It's a pretty exciting opportunity that, that I feel like I've been given an opportunity to do, but I feel like it's so much more than about me. It's about us, the people of St. Francis. When I think about the ways that God is empowering us as a, as a parish and community center to have a transformative impact in the world, to be built up ourselves, and to share the gifts that we've been given in ways that are transformative. And I wanted to just tell you a little bit more about that. Uh, this past week, I had a chance to be on a, um, on a two-day retreat with, uh, with our bishops and with our diocesan uh, senior staff members to really plan and prepare for this transition time. Most of you probably know that Bishop Sutton will be retiring, and he's going to be retiring in March uh, of 2024, I think is the timeline. We are very, very... Uh, blessed by this search process that the committee is moving forward and um, I think that today or tomorrow is one of the last days that uh, the search committee is receiving names for who might be called to be our next bishop. That person when they're elected will serve along bishop, alongside Bishop Sutton and they'll get to work together for a time before that person will assume the mantle of leadership in a, uh, in a, in a full way. And that's a really exciting process uh, to, to imagine, to work with our diocesan staff and to have, um, well, to have that opportunity to see what's going on and to be able to share the gifts of what uh, we've been learning together as a parish and community center, newly formed uh, in this time of pandemic, uh, learning to live not in scarcity, but in God's abundance, uh, to be faithful and courageous um, to take risks and to see incredible rewards being reaped by uh, the ways in which we're living out this faithful vision that God has put on us. You have probably uh, heard Amy and I talk many times about the call of Francis of Assisi hundreds of years ago, almost a millennia, uh, as he prayed in the chapel of San Damiano uh, to be told by God, Francis, rebuild my house that has fallen into disrepair. The work of building and building up uh, is a powerful thing to, to be aware of God doing in and through us. We have a role to play in that in the world around us, but to feel God doing that. I was struck by a couple of passages we've heard recently in, in our scripture. On Sunday, perhaps you heard Amy preach uh, from Luke's gospel and, and, uh, and invite us into this season of creation um, but I wanted to touch on uh, just a couple of verses that were a part of that conversation between Jesus and the, the large crowds that were traveling with him. He said, For which of you intending to build a tower does not first sit down and estimate the cost to see whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he's laid a foundation and is now not able to finish, all who see it will begin to ridicule him, saying, This fellow began to build and was not able to finish. I'm struck by that metaphor of the builder, and, and I am uh, just blown away by um, the work that our, our vestry and our finance committee and our investment committee do as stewards of these gifts that we've been given and the ways that they're paying attention to the details, um, helping us to be aware as leaders of what we have uh, to give and what we have to do together to help us um, be shaped by the mission that we've been given to do justice, to love mercy, and walk humbly with God. There's amazing things that are happening as uh, we, gather, uh, we gather together in community to um, be about God's work in and through us. There's so many beautiful things that are emerging here. I think about the work of environmental justice, the work of education justice, of food justice. I think about all of the worship and the formation that's happening, and the ways in which God is really building us up to become something more together. When I think about 
the scale in which we're thinking about this. And, and I imagine and remember that we're a part of a larger diocese to have this opportunity to serve on diocesan staff and to work along, uh, alongside our bishop and with the other clergy and lay leaders of the diocese. Uh, my fellow co-rector uh, and yours, uh, Amy, uh, serves on diocesan council and plays a special role in leadership around that. And one of your vestry members, Kate McAllister, serves on standing committee and the roles that they play at that diocesan level as we are trying to be about God's work. It's easy to think about um, ourselves as the diocese as being something out there, but we are all part of that diocese working together. Now, if we can, in creative and faithful ways, think about the resources that we have, share those in different ways, let go of what has been so that God can do a new thing. I think about this work of congregational vital vitality, congregational development, and the opportunities that I've had to study and learn through my doctoral work, through the College for Congregational Development, and particularly in what you and I have been able to do together over these years. There's a lot that we have to share, a lot of good news to share that can bring people hope in imagining a new way of being. I can't wait to see what God is doing in and through us as we imagine that. Now, um, the diocese is contributing to St. Francis because I continue to be full-time for St. Francis, but the diocese is paying uh, half of my salary in that. And you may recall that it's other grants that pay for the rest of my compensation and benefits as, as you all uh, are, and we together are a part of this wider work that we are doing through St. Francis. When I think about all of the people that are facing eviction and the work that our community center is doing in that arena, when I think about the work of Cornerstone and the way that it's helping to transform uh, through solid financial leadership to help congregations um, be more aware of the financial gifts that they have and that we have, and um, there's some really beautiful things happening in those areas. As I try to imagine and see what it is that God is calling us to do, God is actually doing already through us. It's hard to get a full picture of that, but to trust in God, to trust in the leaders that are a part of this community, and to look to our scriptures for guidance. Um, you heard me reference the passage from Sunday's gospel, and, and then there's from yesterday that came up uh, from Paul's letter to the church in Corinth. As he wrote millennia ago, two millennia ago, and he said, according to the grace of God given to me, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation and someone else is building on it. Each builder must choose with care how to build on it, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one that has been laid. That foundation is Jesus Christ. As we ponder the gifts that we've been given, as we ponder the work of building that we are a part together, as we are reminded that through the incarnation, all of this is Christ. All of this is God imbued. The foundation that we live upon, dwell upon, um, is all God. And we are called to build on that foundation together. It's amazing to think about. And it's even more amazing to feel God reaching through us, using our hands to build up the body of Christ. Um, not just in bricks and mortar, in buildings that, that are owned by the church, but in the wider work that we're called to do uh, as God um, calls us to be stewards of this earth, to love our neighbors as ourselves. We... Um, we're being changed, we're being transformed, and it is so exciting. I know it can also feel scary probably sometimes and maybe a little bit um, confusing to imagine all that God is doing in and through us, but when, uh, when we're called to have faith and we're called to trust in the great builder that is God, it gives us a sense of feeling empowered, um, of believing that even when things feel uh, really difficult in the world around us, that God is doing uh, something beautiful through us, using us uh, to be about 
healing and reconciliation in the world, uh, restoration and peace, justice, love, and humility. I am so grateful to be a part of this community with you at St. Francis, and I'm amazed by the work that God is doing in and through you and me and all of us together. Until next time, Christ's peace be with you.